Hey, everybody, and welcome uh, to the webinar today um, on the Data Maturity Roadmap for Marketers. Now, before we get started, I uh, just want to let you know that our webinar is echoing a recent white paper that Messageers created, which will be available in the handouts uh, section of the GoToMeeting panel today. Uh, let us know if you want to download that, go through it, give us questions if you're reading through while we do the webinar, um, and, and let us know what you think. But when I say us, uh, uh, who I'm talking about today is myself, Nick Zico Lopez on the left, and today with me is, is Jeff, uh, who is who is seminal in preparing the white paper. How are you doing today, Jeff? Doing great. Looking forward to it. Awesome. Awesome. So what are we going to be doing today? What, what are we talking about? Well, we are talking about the road to data maturity. Now, echoing that white paper, again, available in the handout section for those of us uh, just joining, talking about the different tiers of the roadmap. I think a lot of times message years and, and many other companies uh, that center around marketing and, and using your data effectively, talk about uh, some halcyon or some utopia of, oh, this is what it looks like. But what we wanted to do in this piece is talk about how to get there. So we talk about what is data maturity for marketers, who else benefits from it, the different tiers of the roadmap, how you gradually get there, um, and, and what message years does um, to help our marketers uh, travel through the roadmap. Uh, so let's talk about what is data maturity. So, so the definition here is is full control over customer data across your entire organization. So, you know, we hear a lot that people don't experience, and I, I believe our partners at Movable Inc. say people don't experience data; they experience content. But all of the content, all of the experiences that your users have, are fueled by the data that you have about them. The message you could present is only as good as the data, uh, and that's what data maturity is: is having that full view of everything you know to fuel each message. I, I like the example that Jeff put in here um, as uh, uh, how to how use data maturity, but but anything to add there other than uh, um, the webinar is fascinating, Jeff? Um, yeah, I mean, data maturity really is getting to the point where you really have your arms around your data. You, you feel like you have uh, everything under control, you, you've got everything kind of revolving around it, and uh, and and you feel like uh, your technology isn't getting in the way of doing what you want to do with it. Um, so, so who is a good candidate for the data maturity roadmap? Um, Je Jeff, can you tell us a little bit about um, the, the idea of tons of customers? What, what does that mean? And, and it is a little vague, but, but uh, yeah. I mean, you're, you're sending millions of messages a month, uh, probably tens of millions of messages a month. You, uh, you are an enterprise organization. You have a, a, you have a ton of customers and, in, and with that comes a ton of data. Um, and you recognize that, hey, we need tools that will help us deal with all this data. And, th and that's exactly it. I mean, it's it's your large B2C organization. Uh, at smaller scales, oftentimes the roadmap may not apply because you can jump steps. You could, you know, you you don't necessarily go tier to tier. You can do whatever you want. But like you said, data is key. So investing in data is key. This this is for people that understand that investing in a data warehouse, whether it be modern, whether it be performant is important uh, but i think the third bullet point is, is, is maybe the most important of all yeah you need to be feeling this pain i mean look it, it while, while we're going to tell you like you can get here you totally can do this and we can help you do it um getting the buy-in from the organization is going to be challenging and if your team members and if, if the wider organization isn't kind of feeling the pain of having to get this data working for you it's going to be challenged to get that buy-in that you really need um, so, so what is the roadmap? Before we start today, I just want to give a quick uh, outline of what we're talking about. It's a three-tiered roadmap. The idea is uh, really working stage by stage. So I'll go ahead and kick it off. Tier one, just injecting live data into your workflows. Where, you know, again, this is not an overnight change. This is not you turn it on and now you're using data and now you're mature. No, the first one is to begin to inject live data into the workflows. Jeff, what's number two? So you're going to orchestrate customer journeys. It is the point where you know I I think it begins to, to get kind of fun, where you're uh, you're getting to use your data um, and and you're using it in a way that that brings the channels together and brings the different mediums together, and you're starting to really orchestrate fun, interesting uh, journeys and, and campaigns that that make the customer experience that much better. Well, and it's why we're marketers is because you get to create experiences, you get to create journeys, workflows that that, that are based on that data. They're not based because. Because before that, any journey or workflow you create is based off of old data and, and may not even be relevant. But, but then tier three, obviously, at the top of the pinnacle, warehouse first, owning all of your data, run it, really being that, that 
uh, organizational mind frame that you have a center of control, a single pane of glass to see everyone through. Um, and that can be for, for, better, for lack of a better term, your data warehouse. We wanna find out about you. So where are you on today on the roadmap? So with these three tiers we've got, are you injecting live data workflows? Are you, are you able to, to orchestrate customer journeys? Uh, do you feel warehouse first? I'm gonna go ahead and launch a poll here. So you should be able to see some of the poll options come up now. And, and we really care uh, about, in, in this example, where you feel you are. Um, Jeff, where do you feel you are? <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, I, I think that like a lot of people, uh, you know, I, I think there, we recognize there are challenges with data. And so, you know, we're, I think we're, you know, we're probably, and we, we've gotten some tools and we've invested in that, but, uh, you know, getting, getting the, the data silos and everything, I think is something that is a, is a challenge that a lot of people have, have uh, problems with. And, and, you know, we've seen that. Personally, I've centered all of my marketing around my database. That's just me though. That doesn't apply. This is just in real life. That's what I do. No, no. Um, uh, uh, so we're going to go ahead and close the poll. Uh, about 45 seconds or 48 seconds now. Uh, uh, see many people have voted. Now, now, now here's what we're going to do. We're actually going to hold on to those results and we're going to circle back around to them a little bit later in the webinar and we're going to talk about why those are important. What we want to do now is talk about the first tier of the roadmap. Talk about if you're going from nothing to something as some of you are in the poll what what where you want to be how you're going to get there and what you're going to do so so let, tell us a little bit about tier one jeff yeah i mean at the beginning here uh i, th I think one of the major things is, is just you're not connected into with your esp you're not connected to that database you're not using live data when you begin you're just not using it at all you're using a copy of your data it is not fresh is not reflecting the actual live real-time version of what your customers are doing and where they are in in their own journey and so even abandoned cart campaign something really simple and basic that most every retailer e-commerce is going to do you get in there you begin to to put something in your cart you're going to buy it one of the great buying signals you can ever have they added it to the cart and so if they abandon that you, you need to get back in front of them they're somebody who wants to buy and you have an opportunity to send them an email and go hey come on back but if the data isn't right if the data isn't fresh if you're having to wait 24 hours then you're going to be sending people emails about abandoned carts that they've already gone back and and purchased it um or, or they've given up and they've gone somewhere else because they forgot that they even had it in there and you've lost that sale you've either given a bad customer experience and we've probably all seen it um one of the most common People. things i when i tell them about message here what what problem do you solve we keep you from getting that abandoned cart camp campaign email that you knew you already bought it and so uh everyone can relate to that and it's a challenge that marketers have everywhere well and, and by the way to answer a question that's popped up when we say your esp doesn't connect to your database we mean natively connect using that live data without copying it into another system almost every system is going to end up in one way or another using that data but in most situations, they're copying that data. You have to set up a data feed, and we're going to get into what that looks like. But, but when, speaking of copying that data, uh, uh, and, and this is actually uh, pertinent, you're paying for the data in both places, right? You don't copy your data to another system and get it for free, right? It's going to take time, and it's going to cost money to store it. And, and your data is not consolidated or as successful as it needs. And, and this is the data even before or after you upload it, whatever you're doing, it's not in a place where you can access it, where you can see all of the, the data you want on your customers. So uh, let's talk a little bit, uh, I'll take us on, on the first uh, part of, of what tier one looks like. It's using live data for simple workflows like third-party activation. Now we understand that things like email, things like SMS push are, are the, the, the bread, and bud and, uh, bread and butter and are incredibly important to your marketing uh, activities. So uh, typically when making such a big change, you don't wanna start just immediately injecting or starting powering those live data but facebook custom audiences google customer match any of the hundreds of destinations that live ramp provides great to plug directly in that database don't you don't have to copy it into a third-party cdp you don't have to copy it into some activation center you could just start uh i would say activating on those workflows first uh, jeff you were, you were talking to us about uh abandoned cart what, what is the way to cut the data live there can, can you tell us about that yeah, I mean, if you're if you're connecting directly in the database, so if you're having that struggle, if you're going, you know, we'd love to send an abandoned cart campaign, but 
you know, we have to night, do a nightly sync and, and with our with our ESP. That's the only way we can get the data up there and get it ever in place to be able to use it. And then when you do actually send it, the ESP will tell you, we'll send that campaign tomorrow. And by the time you've sent it, they've either gone back in and bought it, at which point the customer is going, wait, didn't I already, I thought I bought that. And then they have to go back in their email and they have to find the receipt. And did they actually buy it? Maybe you even get a call to your customer service people going, I thought I bought this, but I got an email saying I didn't. If you can get with your live data, real time, you can send that email at the time you want to be able to reach them in a timely manner within a reasonable time frame that you can get them back. And even taking that a step further, personalizing emails on open. So Moodle Inc, uh, uh, partners of the webinar, uh, uh, have, have, you have the ability to personalize emails upon open. So, so even if you're setting that up to the minute or, or you can or you can't, Utilizing a tool like Move Link, powered by your live data, and Message Gears has a solution for this, which we'll talk about in a minute, is going to elevate that program. It's going to take from showing old loyalty status, old purchase habits, all of that, and make it absolutely new so that whenever that email is open, that is a net new version of, of that copy and net new version of that message. Um, and and it, it can't be stale. Instead of sending a postcard, you're sending a, a, a live screen TV, um, which is changing every minute. Um, but you know, at the end of tier one, what you've done, you started injecting live messages into third party workflows. You've begun to take some API use cases, which uh, need data like abandoned cart, which, which need that fresh data and begin to power those off of your live data, off of your database. And then on open, you're able to take certain campaigns, uh, uh, and, and you don't have to start with them all. You can start one by one and you're able to personalize that message. Um, whether that be loyalty status. Uh, anything you want to know, you want to know about them, or to show them in time, you're able to do that, and, and, and that's where tier one gets you. Let's talk a little bit about tier two. So this is where we talk about orchestrating customer journeys, beginning to see an end-to-end -end view of the customer and what and what they're doing. So so if if, if your car was broke down in tier one, um, you've got a car, uh, and I love the image that, that we picked for this one, uh, but you're pushing it, uh, you're pushing the car. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about tier two, Jeff? Yeah, yeah, you are. You're, you're, you're kind of pushing the car. The, the image works because, yeah, you, you've got a car. You're sitting up there. You're, you're, you're happier. You're moving forward. At least you're going. You're not broke down the side of the road. Uh, you've actually made a good bit of progress in tier one. Uh, you've upgraded your Martech stack, but there are data silos that are getting in your way, and that that happens to to a lot of people. Uh, you know, companies get in there and they they go, hey, we're going to invest in a, in, a, in a great data warehouse. Uh, or, or CDP, and uh, and great, terrific. Like the, those, those are great things to do. Bring a snowflake for a data warehouse. Bring in, bring in a, a, a CDP, a, a treasure data. You know, you could bring in a great one, and those are good to have. But they're still working with a copy of your data, and so you're still having the issue where email and mobile push and SMS campaigns maybe built with different UIs and, and really looked at as different things. Um, they're not talking to each other. You're not getting the uh, the customer uh, journey to be uh, synchronous uh, among the, all of those, um, and uh, and that's where you really want to try to go uh, to, to try to get going forward. And, and you know that's actually almost a poll I wish we could have done is are you designing different channel workflows totally separately? I think that that is that is a thing that we've been you know conditioned to think is is absolutely normal, but you're doing that because your data and because your tools aren't synced up in the same place. So, so if we're on tier two, what are we doing? Well, for the first one, and you've heard it here, and you're gonna hear it everywhere else, start building a customer 360, but the difference in how we're suggesting to build a customer 360 within the data maturity roadmap is build it on your live data. There are gonna be a lot of tools that tell you that they're gonna provide a customer 360. What they're doing is they're making a copy of your data, and then they're letting you see that. So it's a little bit older, and, and maybe the, uh, it doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't allow you to do as much. Maybe you can segment on top of it, but it's not live data. What you need to be doing is building that directly and investing in data, which if you're here, you understand how critically important that is into the tool that you have. Uh, you going, you know, going back to that, that example I was just using, live cross-channel campaigns. So a, a customer marketing platform that has the ability to combine all of the channel execution you want into a single view. Stop putting up with the fact that you need to log into disparately separate systems to launch separate workflows. Your audience doesn't see you like that. No one sees you like that, right? And, and, and when we all say it, 
that's not something that most of these tools address or, or, or do. Great for, for singular uh, channel execution or, or maybe you know multiple versions of mobile, uh, but not all three. Um, and, and then Jeff, can you talk a little bit about moments-based marketing? Yeah, and, and, and you know, we talked about the beginning. You need to have a lot of data for this to be a, a thing that's really going to matter to you. And uh, and yeah, and you mentioned it just a minute ago, like your customers don't see you as, as different things. Your customers don't see you as, uh, as, as an email over here and an SMS over here. It's all one, it's all under your brand. And so moments-based marketing is, is where your, your brand is going to be able to hit people with the message at the time that they want it. Uh, I always go back to a, a travel brand. Uh, you know, you think about if you book a, uh, a flight with Expedia, and your flight is leaving in two hours and either the gate changes or the flight is delayed um if they send that to your email um i'm not checking my email uh i'm I personally some people might be what if i want that i need that to come to my mobile push or i need it to come to my sms i'm not checking push i don't want push message i want sms i want it to come right to my text they, they you need to be able to tell them that like they need to be able to know that and send it where you want it because that is how you're going to get those brand experiences that are going to bring you back. If Expedia can hit you with that message where you need it and tell you, hey, your gate changed before you go, will you walk a mile that way in, in Hartsfield, uh, <laughs> Jackson, uh, <laughs> everyone is done, and then find out your gate actually got changed to the opposite side and you nearly miss your flight, what if they could send you that message where you would get it and you would know ahead of time, you could get to the right gate, you could have time to actually sit down and, and, and eat something and, and have a sip of water before you get on the flight, you would go back and book again with them. And that is moment-based marketing. Uh, we have a question here, and I think what the question is asking is, what, what does data have to do with cross-channel campaigns? And, and I think the heart of the question is, you know, it, it seems like a marketing tool question on data. What we're saying is, is a cross-channel campaign is incomplete unless you have that picture of your customer. The channel they want, like what time do they want to be reached at? What channel and what is the content? That's where that data comes into play. That's where it's a data maturity uh, uh, play. If you ask that question, feel free to clarify. Uh, but that's what cross-channel and data maturity have to do with each other. You cannot effectively use cross-channel without the right amounts of data and understanding behind it. So, so that's that's tier two, um, uh, and, and we're and we're almost there. We want to talk a little bit about, you know, the the end of the roadmap, tier three, wherever you go, wherever your journey has taken you, you are there. Uh, being warehouse first and owning your data. Now, it sounds silly to say owning your data, but really owning your operational data. If you're copying data to a third party and working in there, you're not owning that data. That's not your operational data, right? You've got your data warehouse and that's over there. We're saying to own that and operate off of that. So. Talk about a little bit about life prior to, to tier three. And, and you know, I, if, if you were moving the car earlier, getting into tier two, you've got, now you've got a car that works, right? But maybe it's not the car you want, unless you want a, uh, what it looks like a 1997 white sedan there that's been covered in moss. Um, I, uh, uh, 99 Dodge Stratus, that was my first car. Um, but uh, uh, what was that, Jeff? All buff out. Yeah, it'll all it'll all buff out. But but you're getting uh, uh, to 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 really traveling how you want to travel. So so let's talk about uh, prior to tier three. Your CDP or your ESP are still the gravitational center of your marketing strategy. You've been unable to pry yourself completely from them. Maybe you've injected live messages. Uh, maybe you've been able to to start adopting cross channel workflows, but they're still the center. Various teams also because they're the center and because you probably have an ESP and maybe you have a mobile provider and maybe you have a CDP various teams are using their own versions of a source of truth and this is actually a big uh, hamstring even for advanced marketing programs uh, not knowing where we see programs get hamstrung not knowing what true north is not knowing when we do x what, what happens y because they have slightly different versions of the data and that accounts for slightly different versions of what is working um you know and then finally not all of your data related tools integrate seamlessly with your data warehouse We've been saying it a lot. Uh, you know, I, I think Jeff says it well. But you know, when you're copying your data, that's not a data forward tool, um, and, and it simply isn't. Um, and so, so if you're still there, you've gotten a car, you can go. Yeah, you can you can go along the road, but you're still wanting to get there. That's where we get what, what 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 it looks like. So Jeff, can you tell us a little bit about what we mean when we talk about a warehouse first mindset? Yeah, and and this is hugely important, and this is really where tier three we're making that next leap. Uh, is huge. Um, you've come a long way if you've gotten here, by the way. You know, if you started from 
you don't even know hardly where your data is and, and you're not using live data at all. If you've gotten even to that moss colored car, you've actually come a long way and, and you should feel good about that. At the beginning of tier three, you're in a decent place, but you're still not having that data first where, uh, uh, mindset. And that is where so many teams, and we hear it all the time, you know, the, the ESP, because that's where they're building their campaign, they're copying their data up there, they're building their campaigns there, or they've got a great CDP, they know it's going to do amazing things for them, they get a view of the customer, all their data gets copied up there, and they've got this view of the customer and everything's plugging into there, or everything's plugging into their ESP. The problem is their actual data is still over there, and they haven't gotten everyone kind of bought in on that needs to be where everything's plugging into. That needs to be where you're really centering all your marketing strategy around. And so that's the mindset is getting to the point where you're not thinking, does that connect to my ESP or does that connect to my, my CDP? You're thinking, does that connect directly to my data warehouse? Does it allow me to use what is there? Yes, and 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 we, you know we talk about it a lot. If you have any questions, uh, we released a webinar on being warehouse first with our friends at uh, uh, Big Data as well as Rudderstack. Feel free to go to resources message here. Let us know in the questions if you've seen that at all. Um, but but what that opens up is is no more varying versions of data. We did it for the alliteration, and we'll be honest. But the fact that it's varying versions means that it, a little bit what we were talking about. You don't have different sources of truth. You have a single view of your audience. You have a single view of what happened. And you have a single view of if I make this action, if I take this, if I do this messaging for each person, here is what is going to happen. So the reason that the warehouse first mindset is key for that is the fact that you need it to be in a single place without copying it um, into different places. Uh, quick question here. Um, yeah, so the question is, uh, uh, do you need uh, a specific database to be warehouse first? Uh, and the answer is no. Um, the warehouse first mindset can be adopted with any set of tools as long as the data can be accessed in a certain way. Now, absolutely what we call our modern data warehouses, uh, in the last five, 10 years, we've seen a dramatic shift in how warehousing is done. Things like uh, Google BigQuery or Snowflake or, or Redshift, it's typically easier with those tools because those tools are purpose meant for that, uh, but, but it can be any database you have. I'd, I'd be really interested in, in uh, the, the, the database you're referring to. Um, uh, and then Jeff, bring us on. What is it? What is the third? What, what when we are at the top of the of the, the data of the uh, data maturity roadmap? Um, what is what are you looking at with in terms of vendor selection? And, and that kind of goes back to a little bit of what I was saying before. Like when you're in that mindset, you you should be evaluating your Martech stack. You know, do a full evaluation. You've got your your data in Snowflake, hopefully, or uh, or BigQuery or whatever uh, great database you've invested in and you've gone, we're going to consolidate our data, we're going to get to a point where we can really use it. Um, it's at that point you need to evaluate your MarTech stack. Um, it does your ESP, do your, if you have a, a CDP, if you have any sort of data activation platform, whatever you might have, do they connect into there and let you use it where it lives? Um, because if they don't, then you're paying for it twice, you're using stale data, you're delivering worse customer experiences, and you have the opportunity at that point, you're almost there. You were right at the end of this journey. You were so close, you can't, you, you can't <laughs> let it go at that point. You need to go, take that final step. Don't, don't settle for being at the beginning of tier three. So we're gonna take that final step. We're gonna evaluate our MarTech stack, and we're gonna make sure that our tools connect into there directly and allow us to use it without copying it. And if they don't, start looking for ones that do. They are out there, we have some, there are others. Find tools that will help you do that. The, uh, the warehouse first mindset um, is not, uh, I would say, only uh, a message here's thing. Many yeah. tools, more and more tools are integrating directly with the website, uh, with, with your warehouse. And it's not just, you know, marketing tools, analytics tools, uh, um, I would say uh, journey tools, all functioning directly off of the data that is in the warehouse. So, 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 so why are we talking about this? What do you do? Um, Jeff, I'm just now noticing, I like that you did a car mechanic. I really appreciate that. Well, well, uh, well do you, I mean, do you remember that poll? let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing there so let's share the results there and and honestly this makes so much sense to me uh uh if i had to guess what i would have seen we, we should have taken bets jeff uh but the fact is that uh very few of you um are in a place where you are just swamped it looks like uh 13 there the majority of the people are where we'd say getting out of tier one into tier two 
So they've invested in SaaS tools, but still have data silos around the organization, unable to join that, unable to be warehouse first. And, right. and then a few of you look like, look like you're in tier two, ready for tier three. The tools are in place, the data's there. But the ESP or the CDP are still your colleague. And Jeff, that's exactly what you were saying when talking about copying data and needing to log into other systems to, to do your market. Uh, what's actually really interesting here is is zero percent uh, uh, either have or are willing to admit uh, that they've nailed it, right? And, and that makes so much sense. Why would you be here? Why would you be interested in the data maturity webinar uh, and roadmap if you had achieved it? Um, so, so I guess my thought is, if you're in the 13%, we're thinking tier one, tier two. If you're in the 63%, you're around tier tier uh, early tier two, and then 25%, we think you're ready for the tier three, but you're not quite there. Feel free to let us know in the questions uh, uh, if you feel that, that that's accurate, or, or uh, uh, if, you, if you have any other questions on on, um, on what Message Gears does. But, but this is where we really bring it home here, is that Message Gears is a customer marketing platform meant to elevate marketing for all organizations, big or small, by letting them effectively use their data. We can directly connect through our accelerator data connection, uh, connection technology. We utilize native connections to modern data warehouses. We don't need a predefined schema, but the important thing is that everything we just said is unlocked when you connect directly to your data and you can use it in any format you want. You know, uh, uh, we, we talk a lot about uh, um, what is your hardest, what is your hardest program? The program you wish you could do, the program you could barely do, in messages, it oftentimes comes together in an afternoon or hours. So uh, I'm seeing a couple questions pop up. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. Uh, we have a few more minutes here. Uh, one question I'm seeing right away, um, what is the channel I should start going down the road? Yeah, uh, and that's exactly it. So so we're looking at less of a channel focus uh, uh, to, that, to the, the question asker and more of a, what activation source can you, if you're, if you're in that tier one ready to move into tier two, what is that first source of activation that you feel most comfortable trying uh, to be fed with live data? It's, it's very tempting to start with the, the highest impact. Oh, we need live data here. But that oftentimes introduces risk. Something like Facebook or Google, you know, Pinterest, Snapchat, any of the social channels, typically the ads you're seeing are not as mission critical as things like email or SMS or push um, and have, uh, uh, have a lot of uh, just can show the organization what going from live data can do. Um, so, th so that's why we, we recommend that. And plus the, the hundreds available um, uh, through our partnership with library. Um, so, so that is one question. Uh, another question here, um, which, uh, that, that's right, that's, uh, it could be any database, any database. Uh, so the question is, uh, which database is best? It could be any database. We recommend uh, Snowflake and BigQuery. Uh, so echoing back to that. Um, and then a question, what is my favorite tier of the roadmap? My favorite tier, uh, I would have to say uh, my favorite tier is probably tier two, just because at that point we're pushing the car uh, with the, uh, uh, the, the the car illustration there. Well, we talked about it Tier two is where it kind of gets fun. Like that's where you get to be a marketer. Uh, like, uh, you know, tier one, you're, you're just, you're just trying to get the wheels going. You know, you're 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 under the hood. You're you're trying to you're you're working spark plugs. You're you're trying to flag somebody down the side of the road. Like you're you're not having fun. That guy in that picture on tier one was not having fun. Uh, that woman sitting up in that car, she actually looked like she was having a good time. Now the people pushing her car, she looked like she was enjoying herself. She's moving forward. She's doing something like that matters. Like as a marketer, you want to be doing things that are creative and fun, and that's kind of where you begin. To, I don't know, spread your wings, you begin to kind of get going a little bit uh, because at least you're using live data at that point. At least you've kind of got a few things in place. You've got a few MarTech tools and you feel like, hey, we're making progress here. Yeah, and and if I can even bring it back, the person in the car is your audience. Uh, you're in the back. Uh, so you're pushing it, but, but they're having a good experience. Uh, Jeff, anything else as, as, as we break for the day? We're at the bottom of the hour. Any other thoughts? Um, I, I, I just think that... Um, you know, we hear so many horror stories of, of the challenges people are having with with their uh, with their ESP and and their data and and just um, I, I I always feel for marketers in, in that position because I I know what they're dealing with and I think so many of them think we'll just never get there like we we we're sitting here and data is here and data is there and data is everywhere and I can't get access to it and they just 
you can feel helpless. You feel like th there isn't really a way for me to ever get to, to there. So let me just put my head down and do my work. And I know it's mostly operational and it's not that much fun, but I'm just going to deal with it. And they don't think there's a solution out there, but there really is. And, and, and you can do it a little bit at a time. This is what they're trying to help you with. And this is why I, I wrote it and why we put it together. Like this is really trying to help you just take an incremental step process to get to where you need to be and know that you don't have to do it all at once and you don't have to do any kind of crazy things right away you you can do a little at a time and, and eventually you can get to where you want to be uh and that and that is the roadmap uh please uh, uh download the white paper give us a call uh we're excited to talk to you uh message gears has radically changed marketing for many organizations and, and we're and we're ready to uh to do it for you as well uh thank you so much for your time today and we look forward to hearing from you Thank you, Jeff. Yep, thanks.